logo right here. Check it out. Black team body slam by cop over drugs he didn't have. So a black North Carolina man receives $100,000 excessive force settlement. Ooh, check it out. A young black male receives a $100,000 settlement because he was, yeah, he was physically assaulted by the police. It's called excessive force. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the video. Here it is. Here it is. This is Durham. How you doing, sir? Good, how about you? You good? What that mean? What that mean? What's your tip? I'm going to pat you down real quick, all right? Hey, Doc. Where are you? Doc, I'm going to pat you down real quick. If you got, you're not going handcuffs if you're on side. I'm not even doing nothing. Okay. Really? No way. He's running. I just so can't my shoulder. He's running east to the woods. He grabbed his back up. Which man? You may be asking, well, what crime did the young man commit? None. None. Nothing. Not found. Nothing. You know, it's, here's another thing. Why was that cop? <laughs> why was that cop harassing that young man? What do you I mean? Doing nothing. And I said, Oh, what are you guys doing? Nothing. Maybe I and say, oh, What are you doing? Start making a purchase. <laughs> and that cop bitch more. He <laughs> they dislocated short. Good. <laughs> Payback's a bitch, huh, you fat fucking turd cop? The young man received a $100,000 payout oh. because of the incompetence, the criminality of that cop. Put up the picture of the young man. This is a screenshot of a move by the cop. You see that? Where he's trying to literally subdue this young person who committed no crime. That's the beginning of it, all right? This was in Durham. The cop, whose name is Michael McGlasson, grabbed the young Tony Scott Jr. after wrongly suspecting the teen of drug possession. Let me say this. There's a lot of commentary that comes after these segments some say some will say well he was obviously doing something illegal he ran why did he run i want to help somebody here you know and i'm gonna one up on that one people say oh if he had nothing to hide why did he run for the cops you know what it's called when you were somebody's trying to tackle you down or trying to pin you ground or try to fight you it's called fight or flight instinct when somebody's trying to harass you and take you down or fight you or even want to you maybe bodily harm or even kill you, it's called the flight instinct. You run. You run away because you want to get away from the present known danger up in hand. Um, I mentor a lot of young black men. They're afraid. Yes. They're authentically, Bingo. genuinely afraid. Especially when you're afraid of the police, knowing what they're capable to do. Because an officer comes up and up in the situation, guess what's rolling up on you? On you, a gun, with deadly, lethal force, and they're trying to subdue you down, and knowing you did nothing wrong, you're just a binding customer or a citizen doing nothing wrong. When they're trying to bodily harm you or even kill you, flight extinct is going to happen. You're going to run, and you're going to run far and fast to get away from the present danger. They literally believe at times they are going to be set up by the police. Yes. Why? Because Bingo. the police do that. They do. Yeah, it happens. And we've seen it time and time again. And cops lie all, all the time. But we can't lie to the cops because if we do, we get charged with the crime. And cops do set up and plant evidence or make up lies or make up laws or they sit there and arrest somebody in order to, to maintain peace and justification.
They believe they're going to be beaten up by the police. Yes. They're doing absolutely nothing wrong. Why would they believe that? Because the cops do that. Yes, they do. Get away with it. And they do it to a much larger degree than it is ever recorded. So in local communities, these things are happening at a level that would that would that would significantly change your opinion about why a young black male would run from the cops. The city of Durham has now paid out money, a hundred thousand dollars to be exact, to the Scott family. Last month effectively ended the lawsuit against them. A a spokesperson for the city uh, told Atlanta Black Star, the settlement payment to Tony Scott Jr. is not an admission of wrongdoing. The city executes and will perform the settlement agreement solely to avoid the inconvenience, burden, and expense of continued litigation. The statement continued. The police did not immediately return request for comment. Okay? Now, if you want to talk about defunding the police, uh, that's how you actually defund the police, by having cops who engage in activity like this, activity antithetical. Yeah, and you know what? People talk about defunding the police. Well, this is a good example of why cops are defunding. This is a good one. This is a good scenario of how you defund the police, because you get cops out there that are aggressively excessive force out there, and guess who's going to flip the bill? Yeah, the taxpayers like that. Well, guess what? There goes our taxpayer money. You really want to hurt the cops? You take money out of their out of their paychecks, their pension. That's how you really go to the policy. You, that's where you, how you really hurt the police. Activity against the standards of their own industry. Now, the city comes out with spin. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, if the city could defend this, they would, if for nothing else, to make an example. If, if they, they could, could defend it in one front one, of yeah. members of a jury or even a judge, they would, in order to set an example. They could not defend this. I don't give a damn what they say. Court documents allege that the Durham Police Officer Michael McGlasson responded to a call that someone was selling drugs in the store. So he just assumed it was him. How does anybody make an assumption that someone, you get some, somebody goes in inside of a convenience store and selling drugs? That's the stupidest outrageous uh, excuse anybody could ever make up. I mean, first of all, there are cameras all over the store. And there's, and there's food, and there, you, got, you got like screens out there, and you got clerks and other bystanders in the store. If any, you know, transaction is going to happen around, they're going to, everybody's going to be running like, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? And you know, you get the clerk like, bro, what are you doing? What the heck you doing, bro? Um, the glasses body camera video captures the moment he enters the store filled with a group of teenagers. He walked towards Scott, who is seen standing at the cash register. He was wearing what appears to be a Letterman jacket with his last name stick. And you are Letterman jackets that come from when you're in sports. I mean, I never had Letterman jacket, but I, did, I had friends that did. I had a patch when I went to Mount Tahoma, a patch when I was on the golf team. Yeah, that's what Letterman jackets come for, come for, is like when you're in sports, academics. On the front, McGlasson asked him, what are you up to? Before Scott had a chance to reply, the officer said, I'm going to pat you down real quick. Yep. A hesitant Scott says to the officer, I didn't even do uh, nothing. What are you doing? As the officer grabs Scott's arm, he threatens the team by saying, you're going in handcuffs if you don't stop. He started grabbing me harder and harder and, and got a hold of me and threw me. Scott Jr. recounted during an interview with the News and Observer newspaper. The officer then slammed Scott onto the floor. Police found no drugs. None. Police found no weapons. None. But arrested him anyway. On what? On two felony assault Felony charges. assault charges? The charges say what? You mean they're going to charge him with two? Fe- they char- they char- they charge him, arrested him with two felony assault charges. My God, he this guy didn't do it like that. If anybody should be charged with a fucking felony assault, that damn cop. He threw the he grabbed in, uh, that young man, tried to pull him like that, tried to twist his arm and threw him in the ground. Were for assaulting a police officer and assault causing serious bodily injury. <laughs> no, that officer did that to himself. He had enough bit like that to reach around. He, that cop dislocated his own damn shoulder. To throw somebody around like that, a slim and skinny little boy, he needs counseling. He should not. Yeah, he's so like young man. 
skinny, skinny, uh, you know, uh, black man. Homeboy probably, probably, I mean, he probably lives 140, 150, butt ass, dripping on the shower, naked, you know. That's how much he weighs. And that cop was probably, what, two fucking, two and a quarter, 230? Being a police officer, Tony Scott Sr. told WTVD. Scott Jr. told the affiliate, McGlasson did not explain why he wanted to search him. If the police would have come to him in a calm manner and not aggressive, I'm sure none of this would have happened, Scott Sr. said. Um, and he's right. You know, he, he is he right. Knows. Explain it. But there's this assumption. Keep in mind, when assumptions like this are made, the individual on the other side of the assumption, especially, especially if they are aware of how police can conduct themselves in certain circumstances, if you are posed that question, you already think it's a setup. Especially if you are a young man, you think it's a setup. And hell, it could be sometimes. All right? Uh, David thought. You know, and sometimes it will, too. I mean, you get cops out there, they're going to make assumptions out there. Yeah. That's why people will remain silent. Well, say, I don't answer questions. I don't remain silent. Because you already know. If anything you say, even if you're not arrested, sometimes if you're just detained or they're trying to question you, you already know anything you say will be used against you to criminate you. And you get cops out there who say, well, and you get cops that hate when people know their rights, know the boundary, that are going to not talk or say, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't qu answer questions. I don't have to answer your question. I have the right to remain silent. Well, what's your name and badge number? And cops hate that. I was here. <clears throat> a couple of things. First of all, um, in terms of you need probable cause, right, in order to be able to uh, um, uh, effect a search on somebody. A phone call saying that, well, somebody's doing drugs in the store without providing any sort of description, without providing, you know, any details is not enough then. In most courts, I would imagine, and I've seen before, most courts would not say that's enough in order for a police officer to randomly pick out whoever he wants to pick out and start to do a search. Secondly, there has to be some consent for a search. And if there's a lack of consent, I mean, the officer is still obligated to say, here's why I'm doing this. You can't just say, I'm going to search you just because you want to. Yeah. So everything was sort of stacked up here, um, I think, in favor of him getting this settlement. Uh, I think the police officer should be fired. Uh, and clearly, as you point out, I mean, the city wouldn't settle unless, you know, unless it was obvious that they were going to lose in court. So That's why it. is on the city to try to save some money? I just think the police department now, the ball's in their court. They need to get rid of this officer. That's right. Exactly. In fact, and here's one more thing I'll touch up before we get out of here. You know, that cop came on the situation in the scene, and there was a there was a slew of teenagers. There must have been probably five or six. And you hear one of them say, Hey, how you doing, sir? That's good. You know, why did that why did that cop go in the store seeing about that young black man? I mean, he wasn't dressed like a gangster or scruffy. That young man he targeted, I mean he's probably got a good GPA, you know, doing academic activities and sports. I mean, the whole situation, all those, uh, those, yeah, um, those, those kids like right that, those teenagers, he picked out that one in the store because he thought he was doing drugs. And when in fact, he probably was making a purchase. Yep, so another case of how the fuck the cops say, fuck the police. But that's that amount here, my job. Peace out.